Hello, everyone. So let's get rolling with the webinar. As you, as you guys already know, the topic of our today's webinar is MongoDB and PostgreSQL multi-tenancy support by QDB Schema Manager. And on that topic, we have two new faces with us today. We have Arnob and Rakibul, who will both be giving demo and talk on the given topic. And there will also be a question and answer session after the webinar. And you guys can also throw your questions in between the web or demos in the Zoom chat. And we'll be answering all of them in the question and answer session. So, Arnob, are you ready? Yes. Please can take that. Ah, loud and clear. Okay. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Arnob. I'm a software engineer at AppScode. With a bunch of other developers, currently I'm working on the KubeDB Schema Manager project. Today, me and uh, Raki, we are going to give an overall update of our Schema Manager project, what we aim at and what we have done so far. I will do for MongoDB and Raki will continue with the OITRIS database. We are also expecting suggestions and feedback from you for the betterment of our project. To be more specific, in this webinar, we are going to uh, create Schema Manager for MongoDB MySQL, we are also going to uh, manage users and credentials is involved. Uh, by the way, if you, if you don't know what the KubeVault is, KubeVault is actually a product of AppScode. It is a Kubernetes controller for HashiCorp Vault, and uh, HashiCorp Vault is a tool for secret management, encryption as a service, and uh, privileged access management. The credentials creation, management, and deletion are very easy and secure if you use Vault. We are uh, also, uh, we are going to initialize databases with uh, running scripts in volume sources, uh, all, including GC persistent volume, AWS elastic volume, NFS volume, PDC. We uh, then will uh, restore the backup data using Stash. Uh, this Stash is also an absolute product. It is a, a cloud native data backup and a recovery solution for Kubernetes workloads. You can take backup and uh, restore the backup data in production cluster without uh, bothering with the internal things of cloud. Before uh, moving into the next slide, uh, I want to tell you one more thing that if you don't know uh, KubeVault or Stash in details, don't worry. You can uh, simply imagine KubeVault as a, a secret management tool and Stash as a backup and restore management tool. Uh, this will suffice for now. To introduce with Schema Manager, it's a, a tool that uh, supports multi-tenancy inside KubeDB. It also supports uh, developing to get connected and communicate with the QDB's Kubernetes supported databases. So you can uh, see that multi tenancy and developing, uh, these are the two keywords to understand to grasp the idea of schema manager. Multi tenancy means that uh, sing a single instance of the software and its supporting infrastructure and single instance serves multiple customers, which is actually physically integrated but logically isolated. So uh, using multi-tenancy, we can assure that each tenant's data is isolated and remains invisible to other tenants. By using uh, multi-tenancy, we can also uh, get the cost affordable because uh, you uh, don't, you need only uh, one div instance, not each div instance for each of the customers. Also, uh, the integration becomes very easy with various systems if we use multi tenancy but there are some cons too and the main two is security issues and growing complexities management to actually uh, overcome these issues we are actually uh, using keyword to overcome these issues using keyword help us to focus on database management not uh, the database credential management you can see why uh, we are using developing uh, by the way, uh, developing is, uh, you can imagine developing as a mutual agreement or contract between uh, the service provider and the service receiver. Uh, suppose an admin uh, doesn't want multi tenancy, uh, he uh, doesn't want uh, some namespace to be allowed, or he wants to uh, some, uh, some schema only to allow to use his databases. In those cases, if uh, we don't use multi tenancy, there is actually no better way. Uh, the admin can do this. And uh, in our case, uh, the KubeDB database is the service provider, the subject, and uh, the schema manager acts as the service receiver in our case. And we can uh, obviously prevent the unnecessary access. 
easy developed as i have uh, already mentioned uh, these three things we are using kubedb cube vault stage uh, behind uh, the schema manager if you want to get them in your cluster you can uh, go to these links i have uh, i am showing you and you can get the license uh, license from appscode i have already applied uh, this operator the stash operator cube vault operator and cube db operator you can uh, show you can see the versions here in the stash and cube vault but uh, not in cube db because uh, the it is not has been released yet the schema manager so let's start uh, with the mongodb demonstration in the first part, you can in, in the left side, you can see the MongoDB database YML, and uh, in the right side, you can see the Vault Server YML. Here, uh, I'm focusing that in MongoDB, we are allowing only the dev namespace, and we are allowing uh, the schemas who have level schema.qdb.com Mongo. These are only allowed, and uh, the others will be disallowed. So, we are using 4.4.6 MongoDB version. This is a replica set you can see, and uh, this has three replicas. We, can, we are also seeing that the port template here, the CPU has uh, 0.1 core and memory has 100 MB. And this storage is actually nothing but a persistent volume storage. This is, uh, I have uh, used the access mode to read write once and storage to 100 MB. In the right hand side, you can uh, see the vault server. Uh, this vault server is actually a Kubernetes CRD, which is used to deploy a Hashiker vault server in the cluster. It will also create the necessary resources uh, for vault as well. Uh, here you can see that this is uh, also used using developed in things. Uh, it is allowing all namespaces and only the MongoDB secret engines. In the ancillar, uh, an ancillar uh, I'm using as an ancillar I'm using Kubernetes secret. The vault secret will generate five secrets and the vault will require at least three of them to unseal. Here we have said this thing. And uh, we have used Kubernetes as the auth methods, uh, Raft as the backend, and Prometheus as the monitoring tool. Here for the demonstration purpose, I have already created three namespace, which is DV, demo, and dev. In the DB namespace, the MongoDB server is running. In the demo namespace, vault server is running. And in the dev namespace, I will apply the schema manager YMLs. On the right hand side, you can see the MongoDB database YML. This uh, API version is still beyond alpha one, and the kind is MongoDB database. It's uh, name in the level section. You can see that this level I have already used in the MongoDB YML, uh, in the allowed schema field. This is the database ref that, that is uh, referring actually the MongoDB instance in the DB namespace. In the config name, uh, I have set the name to MTDB and this uh, database will be created in the actual database server. This is the vault reference. In the access policy, this is the these are the subject service accounts and as default detail, uh, this is the time to leave time, uh, which is set to five minutes uh, so that I can show you the approach when it got expired, when the secret got expired, and the deletion policies do not delete. So let's start our demonstration. In demonstration, uh, this window is for admin. I am already logged in as admin. In this window, I am uh, going to uh, create or delete the YMLs here. This window is for user. I will uh, log in with the created, uh, vault created secrets in, in this window. And uh, this is the dev namespace, this is the db namespace I've already shown you, and this is the demo namespace where Vault MongoDB is running. And here uh, the MongoDB database schemas will come. So let's see the YMLs. I will uh, first apply uh, the YML I have already shown you. That one, this one, I'm all, this one I will apply now. So let's apply first. The name is simple schema. You can see that this is in progress and now correct. Okay. Let's see the DB condition now. So DB is, this is admin. As uh, the init section has not given, I can see you here, uh, the simple schema. 
as there is nothing in its section that's why uh, the mtdb has not been initialized but if we use cube db system database use cube db system database and show its collection you can use db dot database dot find here you can see that uh, the mtdb database uh, there, there are some credentials for MTDB database as we didn't use the init section. That's why the, uh, this is this has not been initialized. So we can get the secret here. The KC means here uh, just Kubernetes uh, CTL. Sometimes people say to cut out, doesn't matter. Sample name is empty. This is the secret. I can uh, now give the secret. Uh, KVS means cube vault, uh, cube view secret. I can show you this. This is just cube view, cube CTL view secret. So KVS, this one in the dev is this. Now I will use this, use this credential to log in. Authentication database is. Authentication database name is MTDB. Username is uh, this one. And the password, password is also we have shown there. Just copy and paste. And the TV is MTDB. Okay. Yes, we are logged in. Show the DBs. We should not see any DBs as this is not initialized yet. So uh, let me see something else. If we use something else DB, something left. If we want to insert some collection into it, collection dot insert one. Okay. Uh, yes. I don't know. This should not be happened because uh, we are authenticated to use the MTDB, not the something else. DB, okay. So if we use MTDB now, MTDB now, if we run the previous command, we should got succeeded. Yes, this is acknowledged. And now, uh, if we show the collections. Some collection here, DB dot some uh, copy it. And these are the data I have just inserted. So similarly, uh, I can show you the script in scripted things in the next slide. Here you can see that uh, we are going to initialize with uh, script. In the left hand side, I have focused on. Here uh, you can see that this spec was uh, not in the previous uh, YML. In this uh, in this spec, uh, I have uh, referring a config map called test cm, which has some uh, database commands uh, to actually work with. And in in the next thing uh, is port template, uh, which is uh, actually the port template for our init job. So let's uh, apply these things and see what happens. Let's, let's let's apply the config map first. Yes, config map created. Now we will use the script. This is applied. Here you can see this is in progress. Yes, current. So current means this is successful. So I can now get the secrets as previous. The name is, you can see uh, the name in the right hand side, dev namespace. The name is sample script. So, as uh, script, this is the secret. If I just move aside this, if it's exiting to the database and use the secret to get login, does authenticated database. Authenticated database name is uh, you can see this is initdb. Just username equals to 
let's see the secret first. Okay, in Debian space, this is username, and this is the password. Okay, and the database name is in DB as you have already shown. Okay, the authenticated authentication database. I will just type here. Authentication database. Okay, now we can show the DBs. Here you can see we are uh, only seeing the init DB, not uh, the empty DB, because uh, we are logged in. We are logged in in this uh, window using the uh, this this credentials with using these credentials and these have do not have the permission to see the other databases so if i use the mdb and show the collections this is people and people you can get here that uh unit config map here you can see that i have inserted this thing and i we should get this here Dot people dot find. Okay, yes, this is it. So similarly, uh, we will continue for restore. Here you can see that I have uh, in the in the restore uh, I have referred the repository, and in, in the right hand side I have already created uh, the Minio secret and uh, repository backend. Here I have referred the storage secret name as Minio secret, which is this one. And I have set the access key, key ID, and password, blah, 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 these things in uh, this. So if I just apply this, so I'm going to apply uh, the repository things. And uh, repository things, OK, I can show you this. Yes. These are the things will be applied: the menu secret, the repository, and restore. So let's apply this. Okay, everything is applied. We should uh, see this in current. It is in progress currently. Let's wait for some time. Yes, this is current. So this also generated some secret. This we get MongoDB. And the secret uh, name should be get. This name is restore. So let's restore. And this is the secret. We can use this secret to uh, log in into the database. As uh, I have already shown the steps here. So I'm not going to uh, show you this. But I, I, I'm going to uh, show you another thing. That is, uh, you can see that this is expired. So if I want to uh, insert some data with this credential, this expert credential, what happens? You can see that MPDB we are in, and this is MPDB. We, I know that this is MP already expired, so let's insert something. Okay. Okay, something. Let's see. You can see that uh, this is uh, wrong, so we are uh, unable to actually use the secret uh, to insert in, into the database. So here uh, I have two more things to show you. Those are a sharded MongoDB cluster and the standalone MongoDB cluster. So why uh, why we use sharded MongoDB replica set cluster, MongoDB cluster, and standalone cluster? A replica set in MongoDB is a group of uh, Mongo process that maintain the same data set. But uh, in the sharding is a method that distributing a data across multiple machines. MongoDB uses sharding to support deployments with uh, very large data sets and high throughput. So uh, in the sharded cluster, uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we can divide the data actually. But in, uh, in using replica set, we are actually just copying uh, the data from primary to secondary and so on. 
So in sharded spec, we can uh, you can see the config server here. Config server are, are, uh, stores the metadata and configuration settings for the cluster. In the right hand side, you can see the Mongoose spec here. Mongoose uh, act as a query router, providing an interface between client applications and the sharded cluster. Starting uh, in MongoDB 4.4 version, uh, Mongoose uh, can support this. And in the next thing is shard. You can see that there is two shard with three replicas. Two shard with three replicas. So we we are uh, using shard with replica set combined here. Actually, you can see. And the next thing is standalone. In the standalone uh, database, uh, this is uh, same as previous. Just uh, we don't have the uh, replica uh, replicas count here. This is the standalone database. And for uh, for this standalone database and uh, sharded cluster database, uh, we are applying this uh, MongoDB database schema. For alone, the name is sample alone. For shard, the name is sample shard, and so on, so on. So let's demonstrate it. I have uh, another namespace where uh, the sharded cluster and a, a standalone cluster is uh, running. In the DB2, let's see, let's see get ports. In the DB2, there are uh, the sharded MongoDB cluster is running. Here you can see the config server two Mongoose and total of six shards because uh, three replicas of each two shard. And this is ready state. And in the DB3, we have a standalone database running. Yes, this is a standalone database. So, uh, uh, let me uh, let me show let me show if I apply this what happened. If we apply this is the shard schema. Yes, this is applied. You can see that this is in progress and now current. If I uh, want to show the databases now, you can. This is the admin, so he can obviously see all the databases. There is the MTDB, MTDB, MyDB, everything because I have not deleted each one. If I use the KubeDB system, DB dot databases dot find, you can see that these three because her, because this one uh, has been generated in this mongoose, not this one. I, we are executing into this, so. What happens uh, if I just delete one? Let's see. We are uh, we want to delete the restore, so test is in stash restore. Sorry, restore. Yes, this is deleted. So if we now uh, run the same command, we should not uh, see the uh, my DB. Obviously, and yes, the my div is gone. And if I show the divs now, yes, my div is completely gone. So if I simply delete another, you can just get the things here. Init. If I uh, delete the script, this should be this should also be deleted. Yes, this is gone. And if I run the database, fine. And only the empty DB is here. There is uh, nothing uh, in DB or restore DB. So there's the thing uh, I I could show you. Now, uh, Rakib will continue with Postgres database. So Rakib, can you share the screen? Uh, thank you, Anup. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Rocky Bull, software engineer at AppSpot. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you how Schema Manager works uh, uh, on PostgreSQL. For PostgreSQL, uh, so far, uh, on of has show, showed you uh, how Schema Manager works for MongoDB. So you may have understand certain things about Schema Manager. So uh, we are giving multi-tenancy support in uh, Schema Manager. Uh, in multi-tenancy, um, uh, you can isolate one tenant from another. Um, uh, so basically, uh, yeah, you as an admin can give access to one, ten one tenant uh, 
uh, to a separate data, separate database. Uh, we are also uh, using QDV double opt-in feature, uh, uh, in a, which is basically a two-way verification uh, process. Uh, so, so QDV admin and can choose which schema to allow uh, uh, allow access in the server. Uh, here you can see the database server is allowing schema one and schema two and rejecting the schema three because it doesn't have the instance, uh, uh, it doesn't have the level uh, name schema. So, so okay. So now for your uh, for your concern, uh, I've already installed uh, QDV, QVault and Stash, uh, which are running uh, in the background. Uh, if you don't know about QDV, QVault and Stash, uh, you can visit the site that Arnov has already uh, referred to. So I have applied this CML for QDB PostgreSQL. Uh, as you can see, uh, the name of our uh, instance is DBPG, uh, uh, which is running in DB namespace. And here we are allowing the schema from DB namespace with the level of, uh, with the level schema. And uh, I'm using three namespace here, uh, uh, DB namespace for QDB, demo for QVault and therefore our schema instance and here is the uh, AML we applied for um, uh, vault server uh, here the name is vault and the namespace is demo and here we are allowing the secret engine from post the secret engine from our namespace and here is the backend and here is the unsealer secret uh, vault keys so I'm going to show you three things uh, for the for, at first I will show you how to create database and manage user for it and then I will show you how to initialize uh, your database using script and then I will show you how you can restore your database uh, from your from your backup store uh okay um, for creating database and managing user i am going to use this yaml as you can see the name of the instance is uh demo schema uh, which will be running in dev namespace and here you can see we have a, a level name schema uh, so that we uh, so that is uh, uh, this schema will access qdb and we are here we are referring the vault um, and here in the server ref we are referring db and in the config uh, uh, we are specifying the database name which will be created and assigned assigned to a user and, and here is the access policy uh, the default detail and the max detail and the subject that will be used by qvault and the deletion policy is delete so let's dive into the sample uh, here uh, uh, as you can see uh, i'm watching the postgres instance here and the job and the restore session here. And as you can see, our QDB is running well and the wall is running well. So, uh, okay, so at first, uh, uh, let's exec the QDB. Uh, here I will log in, uh, log, in uh, log in as an admin and let's see the state uh, here. As you can see, uh, it's, uh, the user haven't created anything here and it's fresh to go. So let's apply the YAML for creating database. Postgres user. Okay. Okay. Uh, our instance has been created, and it's uh, in in progress state. Okay. Uh, it's in the. Okay. I. Achha, okay. Uh, I think uh, QDB is in critical state. So let's wait. Okay, uh, 
Okay, let's get the condition. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. It's in progress. Uh, it's in is uh, is in uh, in progress. So let's see. Okay, uh, uh, let's delete the instance and apply again. Okay, uh, it's in the field. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's see what happened. Uh, user not eligible to create this database. Okay, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, it, it didn't clean up. Oh, well. So let's change the database name and, uh, and apply this again. Okay, so Okay, let's apply this again. Sorry, uh, I didn't clean up it. Okay, uh, let's see. Is it? Let's get in. Okay. System. Okay, I think uh, I think DB uh, I think QDB is is, uh, is not working properly. Okay, and let's Okay, instead, it doesn't. Okay, uh, let's delete the Postgres. Okay. Let's apply.
Okay. So let's wait until uh, until process is is ready. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, give the is getting ready. So it's in the provisioning state. Okay, uh, the QDB is ready. So let's apply our user. So as you can see, we have successfully uh, created uh, our instance. So let's see. Let's exit uh, in the QDB port. And here we have logged in as an admin. And as you can see, it has created a database named F4 and in as it assigned it assigned it to a user. So let's log in uh, from using this credential. So at first we are going to get the secrets. So we're going to view the secrets to get the credential. So let's log in. Okay, so we are recording to the database, day four. And we will use, you know, we will give the username here. And we will provide the password. And as you can see, we have successfully logged in. And let's create something. Create a table named this or something else. Oh, yeah. okay. So we have successfully created a table here. So let us exit and let's delete it. Let's delete the instant. So we have successfully deleted and let's see what's the steps here. So as you can see, uh, the database is also deleted. So now I'm going to show you how we can, uh, uh, we can initialize our database using a script here. I have uh, I have a config map which referred to a SQL script here, which I have applied earlier. Which uh, the uh, the instance name is init config, uh, which is in the namespace. And this is the YAML I'm I'm going to apply for the schema. And as you can see, the instance name is init schema, which will be running in dev namespace. And as before, we have a level name schema. So that we can access QDB. And here we are referring the vault, and here we are referring the QDB. And here, here is the database name, uh, which will uh, which will be created and assigned to a user. And here is the default DTM max and the subject which will be used by QVault. And here in the init section, we are referring the script uh, name here uh, in the config name. Name is init config and some port templates and the deletion policy is delete. So let's uh, see uh, by applying the YAML. So as you can see that there's nothing here and let's apply the init YAML. As you can see our schema is in progress. As you can see, job has been started. 
and it has been completed and it will take some time to confirm uh, if the job is completed or, and our data is initialized or not. So let's see until uh, uh, it uh, succeeded. So uh, as you can see, it's in, in, still in, in progress uh, instead. Uh, it's actually confirming. So as you can see, uh, our status is current. So we have successfully initialized our uh, database. Let's see here. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, our, our dev2 databases here, which are assign assigning to our user. So let's log in. So at first, we are going to get the credential here. View secrets. So let's log in. Please give them. Sorry. Um, on it. Let's give the username. And, and let's give the password. As you can see, we have successfully logged in and let's see if there is something. And as you can see, we have a, a dashboard table, table name, a table name dashboard, which uh, which was in the script. So let's exit here and let's delete it. So we have successfully deleted it and let's see if there is anything. So as you can see, everything is cleared. So now uh, I'm going to show you how we can restore uh, uh, from uh, we restore our database uh, using Stash. Uh, here um, uh, we have a repository YAML here, which referring the S3, um, S3, S3 bucket. And here is the secret uh, from the um, uh, bucket cloud. And here's the YAML uh, I'm going to apply for restoring. Uh, here is the instance name, which is uh, it's restore schema, and uh, which will be in the div namespace. And here is the label schema. And here we are referring the vault, and here we are referring cube DB. And in the config, we are referring uh, the, the database name and some parameters. And here in the initial in, in it part, uh, we are referring the repository. And here in the access policy, uh, we are giving the default detail, max detail, and the subjects uh, for cube vault. And the, the deletion policy is delete. So let's apply it. Okay, uh, Kishi. Apply. Stress. Restore. So as you can see, our instance has been created. It's in, in progress. So let's see. So as you can see, the restore session uh, is running and the restoration job is created. So it will restore the data from the cloud. As you can see, it has been succeeded. It will take some time to confirm, and in a few in a few seconds, it will be succeeded. So. So as you can see, our, our restore has been completed and it's our instance status is current. So let's see if our database is restored. As you can see, our div3 is restored, which um, uh, has been assigned to a user. So let's see if we can log in or not. So let's get the secret. Let's view the secret. Uh, 
let's log in bring the database and we will be so there is the password and we have successfully logged in and if you want to see if uh, uh, as you can see our table also is stored so uh, let's exit and let's delete it so we have successfully deleted and let's see if there's anything so as you can see everything is cleared so uh, so uh, as we have seen in uh, how uh, schema manager works for postgresql so now it's uh, it's uh, basically under development so your feedback is quite valuable valuable to us so uh, that's all from me if you have any question feel free to ask and thank you so okay Okay, it seems there's no question from the audience. So we can assume that the demo was too good so that there is no nothing to ask. So anyway, as uh, there is nothing to discuss in the QA section, so uh, we should we, we are going to end, end today's webinar and there will be another webinar in a week and that will be around soon. So thank you for your lively participation. Thank you everyone.